Morning Stampers, I'm Meg from Low End Stamps, and this is another Maker Mornings with Meg video. So it's Thursday, which is actually Friday for my kids because they'll have a spring break starting tomorrow. Woohoo! Um, hooray for spring. So this morning it was raining here and, and kind of gray, and it made me think back to a couple years ago uh, when we were getting ready to go on some kid outing and we were at a friend's house, and one of my friend's uh, daughters said, oh, she looked around and like everything was gray and drippy and wet, and she looked around and she said, oh, I love days like today. It's just so beautiful. And I had to totally reframe what I was seeing. And all of a sudden it was, it was beautiful. It was gray and drippy, but everything was kind of dove colored and soft and washed. And, and I just really appreciated her perspective on kind of reframing things. So this morning when it was kind of that spring light rain, it really felt like that day that made me think of her. So um, anyway, now the sun is out a little bit more, which is nice because today's spring project is a box. So we are going to um, take our inspiration from this card, which was created by my friend Karen Titus, and she used the Natural Touch Designer Series paper and the butterflies and some other pieces. Um, and I decided I wanted to make a box instead of just the uh, just the card. So we're going to kind of reuse some of those pieces. You might see them looking a little bit familiar as we go along. And I just want to say good morning, Rita and Donna and Sue and Trish and Tanya and Cindy. And gosh, I'm glad you guys are all here. It's so fun to see you. All right, so let us, oh, for some reason my comments didn't pop over here. Let me try this again. Well, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna turn you guys down in a second. Um, the box that we're gonna use is actually from the Love Always um, suite, and it includes um, these fun boxes, which I'm gonna show you how to fold, and a simple sleeve, and then we're gonna kinda decorate it. And for our decorating, I'm gonna use the butterfly um, from the Butterfly Bijou Designer Series paper, which you guys already know how much I love this, um, and it's coordinating dye, but we're gonna add in some of the paper from the um, Fine Art Floral uh, here, and also the um, acetate overlays that go on this. So we're not gonna use them as overlays, but I do wanna show you this. So here's the paper, okay? And then all I have to do is line up the overlay for it, and can you guys see how pretty that is? And I haven't even taken the um, plastic off of this yet. So there's this page, and then um, there's also this page here from the paper and the gold overlay, which is silver on the back side, so you could use it for silver if you wanted to. Um, it won't match in silver, but it matches in gold. And here is the overlay for that one. So I've used this um, paper, this acetate, a couple times, I think, already. I have to figure out which videos those were. But anyway, all right, so let's get you guys set here. And there we go, um, here is our box. So I'm gonna give you some directions on folding this box. Um, I did one as a Valentine project, which I would share with you, but I think I gave them all away already. So we're gonna kinda go back um, and do this. So this is the sleeve, which is already connected for you. All you have to do is pop it open. And this is a nice, heavy, you can kinda see, um, it's a nice, heavy uh, cardstock. It's, it's a really good weight. Um, these boxes are food safe, so you could use them for food if you wanted to. And they also are self-adhering, so you don't have to worry about gluing them or anything. So first strategy is to just fold gently on all the lines. Um, yeah, you could score them, but some of these lines are gonna be reversed. So, uh, sorry, not score them. You could use your bone folder to really um, match them down, but it's gonna stay together fine without that. And some of them are gonna be reversed, and you don't wanna weaken the... Um, the folds before you get there. Now, if you aren't sure which side should be up, let me give you a lesson about scoring. So when you use um, a scoring um, tool, whether you use your trimmer and the scoring tool or your Simply Scored board or it's scored for you, on one side of the paper, you're gonna end up with a divot, okay? A little part that goes down. We're gonna call that the dimple, okay? On the other side of that same line, you're gonna end up with a bump right, because it pushes the cardstock up so you get a bump there, and that we're gonna call the pimple. So we have a dimple on one side and a pimple on the other, so the simple way to remember this is you show your dimples and hide your pimples, 
okay? So the pimples are the side that's gonna get folded in. That's true on cards too. I know, <laughs> kind, of, kind of a sketchy way to remember, but I promise you will um, remember it more uh, readily that way. So, all right, I'm trying to get my, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna start here with these ends and I'm going to um, fold them in um, these little four small tabs and then I'm gonna bring each of the end layers over to hold the tabs in place and I'm just gonna squish these down flat so like this which I realize you can't see very well there you go see I just squished those down flat and so those are one of the reverse folds then the next thing I'm gonna do is take the short tab and do the same bit there so I've just pushed it down and you'll see it's a little bit gallywampus still um, but a good start and then last I'm gonna take this tab and push it down and just squish it flat and the tab goes into the slot there um, on its own and you have your box all ready to go. So you see it's really nicely um, put together. You really don't have to worry too much about um, pushing the score lines on that. And then it's a nice snug fit on the box so you can um, put your pieces together and not worry about them like falling out or anything. And in fact, I would like to add a um, little, um, pull, punch, pull <laughs> on the end of this. So I have my, um, my hole punch there, and then I'm gonna grab a piece of this um, metallic edge ribbon and go ahead and put this through here. I think, um, I don't remember, maybe, I don't remember how many inches to cut. Usually if I'm just doing like one of a project or making them one at a time, I just put my ribbon through and tie my bow where I want it, and then I trim my ends, so I don't worry too much about the length. All right, so I'm gonna just put that through there and then tie my bow right at the top and the end so that now we have a fun like opening um, attachment point. So your ribbon end will get a little smushed um, and frayed going through there. So make sure you take your snips and trim that um, like really frayed end there at a nice angle so that we have that. All right. Okay, so there is the end of our box, and now we have a fun pull part to easily grab onto and pull. And really, this box is super sturdy, so I don't have to worry about that ripping um, out or anything like that. Okay, so what's next? Here is a piece of the gorgeous paper. Uh, I'm gonna flip it to the other side because the backs of all these papers have these really pretty sort of washed oil um, um, gesso kind of pattern on them. And so I'm gonna bring in my little piece of, oh, I just realized I don't have my natural touch paper. Um, I just have my acetate here, and this one, I've peeled the backing plastic off. The backing is on the silver side. And if you forget to take it off, it's really not a big deal. Um, and then I have one of my butterflies, which I've cut from my butterfly bijou paper using the coordinating um, butterfly die. And if you haven't gotten them yet, um, these, uh, items are featured on my tutorials, my Love & Stamp monthly tutorials for March, and I have four projects um, that I'll share with you, uh, but this um, pieces are fantastic. So I'm a really big fan of that, and the butterfly, and all the dye things, and let me see, do I have my natural touch? Yes. Okay, so I have my natural touch paper here. So this is a square and on the front, it's actually textured. It's got like a little bit of raised bump to it and it's a little bit shiny. So it really looks like a thin sheet of wood. Okay, so now to um, decorate our box. I know it's sad, but we're gonna cover this side up. And I saw um, on the Stampin' Up! Uh, Stampin' Up! YouTube channel, they had a video of somebody actually painting this. So it was painted by an artist in, uh, by, in Stampin' Up! and then they photographed it to use for uh, the uh, papers, so kind of fun. All right, and all the supplies for our project today are linked. Um, there are just a couple things that I couldn't get on there today. Um, tear tape is one of them, and I do like tear tape. You could also use Seal Plus. Um, you want a really strong adhesive for holding this onto your box, so um, not because it's gonna get a lot of, like, you know, it's not gonna, get a lot of movement or anything, but it is um, going to try to open itself back up again, and you don't want your seams to pop. So um, with tear tape, the harder you push that down, the easier it is to peel the backings. Um, 
And I do love the tear tape because it's so easy to put on. Just stick it down and tear it with your fingers when you get to the end of the, oops, <laughs> the end of the stripe. And like I said, it's pretty, pretty uh, sticky here. So I'm going to try not to get my fingers stuck to it while we're going. All right. And then here is my tip for attaching this. Okay. I'm going to start here where I can see what I'm doing. And this is, I didn't tell you before, it's cut to four inches wide by... My handy dandy ruler. I'm on my centimeter side of my um, paper, my table mat here. So by nine and a half. Okay. If I was on my inches side, I could give you that. If you really want to know what it is in centimeters, it is <laughs> uh, 24 centimeters by 10, a little over 10.2 centimeters wide. Okay, there's our metric lesson for the day. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and settle this on here. And I know um, that there's gonna be just a teeny little bit of overlap um, on the left and the right there. So you can see the little tiny white edge showing. Um, I do like to have my insert in my box when I do this so that the, um, the layers are supported. And I think um, you could uh, you could try to, sorry, I'll get my box out again. Um, you could try to make this flat and attach the paper like this. My my worry there is that um, when you try to open it, though, it would try to stretch. It's going to be um, hard to um, open up your box um, sleeve again. So, all right. Now, when I get to the side here, um, it's really tempting to just want to smush it. Let's see. There's the best angle. Just, just smush it around. Um, but if I didn't get this exactly straight, then that smush is not going to go straight either. So check this out. If I pull, so I'm pulling this direction with my paper, I can pull like this to align it up that way. I can pull like this to align it down that way. Um, so as I'm pulling, I'm going to watch and make sure that I get that piece um, aligned the way I want. Same on the back. Okay, we seem to have a game now, which is when mom gets on her video, it's time to uh, whine at the door to go out. So <laughs> we'll see if we can ignore that. All right, kids and pets, right? All right, so I'm going to pop this on this side. And again, I'm kind of pulling and aligning. And there we have our final bit, okay? So we've got that lined up. And I love the texture on this paper. It just, um, that texture is so pretty and it kind of adds a little extra interest to the background. Now this extra piece here, um, is four by two and um, a half, because that's my leftover piece from my four by 12 strip. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off just a sliver um, from the end so that it fits here in my box. And then I'm just gonna squish that down to the bottom, okay? So now we have our box outside started with a fun layer on the inside. All right, so now how are we gonna bring our pieces back in here? I have my natural touch specialty paper, which is gonna go here in the center. So I'll go ahead and adhere that. And then we come to our golden acetate, our golden, what's it called? Golden something, golden, uh, golden garden. This is the other pattern that's in there, this um, sort of trefoil kind of pattern. So our golden garden paper, um, but clearly if we get it clearly, <laughs> um, if we stick this down, we're going to see our adhesive. So we're going to um, kind of hide this a little bit. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to layer things on top. So our, our lesson for today um, is also a lesson on focal points. You guys know um, that I'm big on a focal point. I wanna make sure that we're all like kind of have one, all eyes lead to one spot on our finished project. And so for this one, um, I'm gonna go ahead and use this as my focal point. And I'm gonna pop a Stampin' Dimensional here on the back um, of this, but I feel like we have a whole lot going on here and I want just one more thing to anchor our focal point. So I'm gonna grab my um, vellum and my one and a half inch circle punch and just punch us a little vellum circle. And it's really subtle, but it adds just one little bit of extra weight to this area. Um, I like the vellum because you can see through it. We've used that a couple times recently. Um, so you're not obscuring any of your design. And if I put this on the back, then I can see exactly where I'm going. All right, now I'm gonna use one more dimensional and put this on top here. So we have kind of a dimensional sandwich going. And then I'm gonna position my um, golden acetate 
uh, where it's gonna sit here and then I'm gonna add my butterfly to it and then pick this up again. So now, da -da -da, I have like a secret line of where my, um, where my adhesive can go without showing through. So I'm going to use the liquid adhesive, uh, multi-purpose liquid adhesive for this part because it is a really, really nice strong bond and I'm only gonna kind of attach this one side of it. Now remember when you use that, it takes a second to grab. It's not an instant grab, which is nice because you can fuss with it and move it around just a little bit. But I'm gonna set that there to get itself settled. And I'm gonna bring in my stamp set um, which is Art Gallery, which matches this fine art floral suite, and it's all linked in the video description. And the um, greetings for this are many, um, lots of good possibilities. So I think you could make this a happy birthday box if you want. Um, best wishes, thank you, sorry I'm thinking of you. Congratulations, I miss you, good luck. Um, if you wanted to make some green ones, you could have uh, some good luck for next week on the Share the Luck of the Irish. Um, and I'm gonna bring in this You Are Lovely though because it's pretty all purpose. And so I've got my strip um, here and I really like to start with a really long strip when I'm doing something like this because uh, if I start with a strip that's exactly the right size then I always have to do it over again because it ends up crooked. If I start with a long strip, I can stamp it like eight times and pick the one I like best. Which, um, of course, the irony then is that when you have the space to stamp it eight times, then the first one ends up being exactly what you want. So, little Murphy's Law there, right? Okay, so I'm going to take this now and I'm going to add this greeting to the front of our project. I'm going to leave myself a little space out here. Um, and if I don't remember, remind me to tell you um, what part I like about this versus one of the other ones that I'm going to show you. And then I'm going to, oh, I just did that backwards. That's okay. No, I didn't. Da, da, da. Yep. Okay, I'm good. We're good. We're good. It's all good. All right. Um, so then we have our greeting here that's going to fit like this on the front. So I'm going to pop another Stampin' Dimensional on the back of this so that it sticks up. I missed with my Stampin' Dimensional. There we go. Um, so that it sticks up a little bit too. And you guys know that um, I always like to embellish a little bit more with sort of one more thing. And so I'm gonna bring in our um, Gilded Gems, which are actually in the um, annual catalog. And they are a perfect match for this, right? We have our gold edged ribbon, we have our gold foiled background, and we have our golden gems to go here. So I'm gonna pop this one right there, which further amplifies our focal point, right? So everything is right here. Um, this is the attention spot where we're gonna look and then you can fill this with whatever fabulousness you want. And if you wanted to know the finished size of the box, I can tell you that it is, oh, it's four inches by two and a half inches, right? Yeah, four inches by two and a half, um, since that's the size of the paper we put in the base of it. So that was an easy answer. Uh, and let me show you some other examples of the same box using the same design. So here is one um, which opens the opposite direction. That's why I got confused on my greeting. And this one uses the um, yellow paper, the bumblebee paper, and that bu big bumblebee butterfly um, from the um, same designer series paper. So this is actually um, fine art floral designer series paper. Let me show you some of the other patterns. So they're here on one side and here on the other. So this is what's hidden on the other side of this one. So you could mix and match your paper and have the flowers show. I just really wanted our um, butterflies to take the main stage. So um, I made the papers on the back side. And then I have one more here to show you. And that one is this orange one, which I did with a red butterfly also. And let's see, space here. Um, so here is that one there, and I made the orange on the inside. This is before I figured out the right size for the inside, so that's a little off. It's also, okay, this is pretty subtle, right? So look at these two, um, look at these two boxes, and I put the gem in a different place on this one than I did on this one. And I really feel like this one is an improvement because here, I put the gem way out here. So yes, the butterfly's the focal point, but then, oh wait, shiny thing. So it's a little bit of like a tug of war here between the two things. Do I look at the butterfly? Do I look at the gem? Butterfly, gem, butterfly, gem, blah. Um, it's like the, what is your favorite color? <laughs> Question from Monty Python. Um, anyway, 
If you know that reference, then that's funny. If you don't, then I really sound silly, but no problem. Um, so this side, um, the gem is right here all in the same place. So there's no struggle. This is clearly the focal point. And that's something that I really like to emphasize in my cards, um, to have a very clear focal point so you know um, where your eye is supposed to look. It just makes things feel balanced. So like this card, which is one of our um, monthly tutorials, I'll probably share this one with you very soon. Um, this here is our focal point. So the, the gems, so sequins, they come around the focal point. This extra banner paper, also with a focal point. This greeting, also focal point. The texture, also focal point. Um, same with this one, which I showed you already. This is one of the faux DSP card base um, cards. And you can see a very clear focal point on this one. Um, same with this card, which I also showed you. Um, very clear focal point on this one. Uh, and then this one, which you haven't seen before, um, but also uses the butterfly paper, clear focal point here with this one too. There's a little bit of variety here with the butterflies since there's a little movement, but they're in a group of three, which is always a happy, um, comfortable number, odd numbers. And then the um, greeting here kind of anchors that focal point. So um, again, no matter what you design, um, think about adding your focal point there. So that gives us our butterfly boxes for today. Um, I'll flip you guys back up here. I hope that you have enjoyed our project and I look forward to having some kind of creativity in your day. And Trish says, oh yeah, lots of tips. Or no, we need like a, um, we need like a, a lesson syllabus or something that includes all the stuff we're, we're putting in. But that's my goal is to try and share um, some tips with you guys each day that you would find useful. And uh, if you remember those when you're stamping, then great. So, all right. Uh, so that covers us for today. Um, these little boxes are a lot of fun. Definitely good for all purposes, not just for Valentine's, even though they're on a Valentine page in the catalog. So um, make sure that you get those out um, and use them for other stuff. They're really a nice size. So you could put, um, if you made like small cookies, you could put some small cookies in here. Um, you could put a lot of chocolate in here. This would hold a lot of kisses or little nuggets, um, all kinds of good ideas. And then that little matching paper on the inside of your box is kind of a fun way to just continue the surprise there on the inside. So, all right guys. Have a terrific Thursday and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. So happy stamping.